another episode of Five Minute Salute. My name is Scott Swanstrom, your host for today, and uh, this episode is sponsored by the Firewash. That is Florida's uh, efforts to end veteran suicide, and we have a chance to celebrate our veteran safe places and our watchstanders in our community. And uh, we get to uh, just introduce you to Alex Vore with Trailer Bridge Incorporated. How are you doing today, I'm Alex? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So uh, Trailer Bridge Incorporated is a veteran safe place. You've gone through the, the watch standard program with the Fire Watch. Uh, tell us a little bit about Trailer Bridge Incorporated. Sure. So Trailer Bridge has been around for about 31 years. We just celebrated a birthday. It was founded by a gentleman named Malcolm McLean, who was a pioneer in containerization in the logistics world. Um, our focus has always been back and forth to Puerto Rico. Um, with our own vessels doing Jones Act cargo back and forth. And recently we've ex expanded in the last five or six years or so into um, a logistics business, a nationwide logistics business. Um, and we also have international freight and uh, freight forwarding uh, op options for people. Um, our CEO is a guy named Mitch Luciano, who's been with us since about 2012. And he's made the place a remarkable place to work in terms of a very positive culture, so it's a great place to be. Excellent. Well, it's exciting to hear how Trailer Bridge is expanding and how you're you're going deeper. Also, uh, how have the the virtues, the core values of uh, being part of the Fire Watch, the Watch Standards Program, and uh, Trailer Bridge, how have those aligned? Trailer Bridge has. Uh, I mentioned the culture when I first uh, when we first started talking here, and and. Trailer Bridge has what they call the TB12, which is kind of like a, a set of principles about how we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, the principles uh, revolve around being good people um, and, and helping folks. And there's a tremendous amount of interest in that. And so when I looked at what the watch standards were doing and recognized the type of people we had at Trailer Bridge, I thought it would be a great fit. And Mitch Craig gave us the green light to participate. And so we did. And um, the program that the Fire Watch offers is fantastic in terms of the training that's available, and it's valuable for those who know veterans who might be running into problems, but it's also just generally valuable for anybody uh, who might run into somebody who's contemplating suicide, which is a problem throughout all of society nowadays. And so it's, been, it's a great training program, and when people were going through it, and I was encouraging people to participate, I can't tell you how many folks came up to me and told me how much they enjoyed the training, how much they got out of it, and uh, how fantastic it was. But it really fits into our culture to participate in something like this because uh, we're interested in doing things that can help you be helpful for people. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for what you're doing and for what Trailer Bridge Incorporated is doing in its community. Uh, I know you had a time to be able to serve in uniform. I did. Uh, tell us a little bit about your service and maybe uh, some of the challenge you, challenges you recognized uh, going into civilian lifestyle. Sure. So I, I spent 25 years, a 25-year career in the Marine Corps, um, retired uh, in 2013, and um, you know, came into the into the commercial world. Um, a lot of folks who retire end up in DOD contracting or those type things, which is kind of like old home week again. You know, everybody around you, you know. I took a little bit of a different path into the commercial world. I think um, for folks who are retiring, especially after a career, one of the things that you really have to understand is you have to be a little bit humble. Mm -hmm because you're making a, a change into an entirely different occupation where oftentimes you know, the value that you bring to it is, is what you understand about the commercial world, and we really don't have that. Mm -hmm. And you know, veterans bring a tremendous amount of leadership and management type experience to any situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. But you have to be humble enough and have to be able to roll up your sleeves and actually go to work and, and, and get involved in doing those things and, and uh, try to add value wherever you can. Um, when you look around when you first get out and you see how organizations are designed, it feels very comfortable because there's a lot of parallels there. Mm -hmm. But the more time you spend away from the military, the more times you sometimes find that it's the small nuances that make all the difference. And one of the things that's terribly, terribly important is culture. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that until I came to Trailer Bridge, really. Um, because the Marine Corps has a culture that is so ubiquitous that I just took it for granted. It was very, very comfortable there. The, the couple places that I went um, afterwards had culture. One had a culture that was not good, and one had a culture that was, uh, it, was a, it was a culture that was just different. But uh, Trailer Bridge's culture is uh, something that they w really work on very, very hard, and uh, it's a very positive one. It's a great place to be. 
So I'm very comfortable there. Let's put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like you found your right fit and it has an amazing culture that's very uh, supportive. It is. Um, what uh, words of hope would you offer to a veteran or a veteran's family member who might be struggling with maybe a mental health challenge or even suicidal thoughts? Sure. You know, I, I think what, I, what you have to do is um, you have to uh, uh, try to get involved as much as you possibly can. Uh, there's not that whole kind of uh, peer group that you have around you. There's no one telling you what you're going to be doing and where. So you have to take the initiative and get involved yourself. But the more that you can try to get involved in your community, and perhaps that's either through a, whatever job you have, or maybe even through some type of a faith, faith-based faith community mm -hmm. or social opportunities, I think the more you can get involved and entwined, the better. The worst thing in the world to do is to try to is to kind of withdraw in this mm -hmm. situation. But it's a serious transition because you go from something that dominates your life and all of a sudden that's kind of ripped away mm -hmm. and it's formed who you are. And all of a sudden you find out that you're out in, in a world where people don't necessarily understand that and appreciate that as much. Mm -hmm. You feel a little bit lost. I certainly understand those feelings. But uh, there's a lot of uh, great opportunity out there and um, you just have to push yourself and have the discipline to, to put yourself out there and get involved. I think that helps a lot. Alex, what's one thing you're celebrating this week? Well, this week, yesterday was Anzac Day. Anzac is the uh, anniversary of the British and, and uh, Australian and French landings on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Oh, wow. Okay. So kind Great. of an interesting and historic day. Important day for the Marine Corps because it helped found our amphibious doctrine. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A little bit of history there. Very Absolutely. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you again for joining us for another five minute salute. If you or your business are interested in becoming watch standers or a veteran safe place, I want to direct you to the firewatch.org. There you can find a 30 to 45 minute uh, free training, and that training will help you to be able to identify veterans with risk factors and warning signs that might relate to suicidal thought, and uh, you might be able to direct them to those supports. If your business goes through this training, you'll be able to receive that Veteran Safe Place status sticker for your window. And uh, who knows, we might be able to have an interview with you uh, in future episodes. So thank you again. This is Scott Swanstrom with the Firewatch, and we are putting on a very special event to show our appreciation to all of our watch standers, our veterans, and our family members that are part of those communities. And so we would love to have you come out for our bonfire and barbecue at Hannah Park on May the 6th. Uh, feel free to register at info at thefirewatch.org, and we would love to see you there. Welcome back to another edition of Five Minute Salute, where we have a chance to interview uh, watch standers and veteran safe places that are pushing back the darkness in regards to uh, veteran suicide. And this program has been brought to you by the Firewatch, who is providing these trainings to individuals and businesses to recognize risk factors and warning signs for, for uh, veterans who might be in crisis. And uh, today we have a special guest. Ron Gamble from Veterans United Craft Brewery. Welcome, Ron. Well, thanks, Scott. I appreciate it and I'm glad to be here. So we are so excited to have you uh, just to kind of share a little bit about uh, Veterans Craft, uh, mm -hmm. Veterans uh, United Brewery and uh, the great things you are doing in our community and the fact that you guys are a veteran safe place and that you've gone through that training that the Firewatch has offered. But first, tell us a little bit about Veterans United Craft Brewery. Okay, uh, so my name is Ron Gamble. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran. I served eight years active duty, four years uh, in the reserve. I was a uh, naval flight officer flying uh, jets off of aircraft carriers. Um, every generation of my family has served as far back as the Spanish-American War. So uh, being in the military and being a veteran has been something I've been very passionate about. Uh, and we started the brewery in 2013, opened for business in 2014. Uh, it's called Veterans United Craft Brewery. It's veterans coming together to share our passion for craft beer and also our experiences uh, in service. 
So excellent. Well, uh, we are just thrilled uh, that you had a chance to bring uh, some beers to show off. And, oh, definitely. And, uh, I, I know I've had a, a chance to experience it from uh, this end as well. And uh, we just love what you are doing in the community. Mm -hmm. um, what made it an easy jump for you and for Veterans United Craft Brewery to become a veteran safe place? Okay, well, first of all, 80 or 85% of my employees are veterans, so we all have that shared common experience. And through the years, I've, I've met uh, many, uh, some employees, some customers uh, who, who have served and also I've had some issues after leaving service. So uh, it is something that we've had to deal with uh, in some of our employees. And it would, this was something important. I felt if my employees, both the back end, those that brew and those on the front end that manage the tap room, if they could, you know, be aware of the signs of someone in distress, uh, it would be great because like I said, there's a lot of customers that come through our door and that, and when they have a beer and they sit down, they tend to share their experiences. And that's where I think we need to be a little bit more aware of as they share the experiences. Could this person be, you know, of harm to themselves or others? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and it's so important to be ever so vigilant, especially for our heroes mm -hmm. and, and even heroes need heroes, don't they? They do. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Tell us a little bit about those maybe who haven't served our country in uniform, uh, about some of those transitional issues that a veteran might deal with when they're uh, okay, yeah. taking on civilian uh, So when I got out, I got out in, uh, in 95 from active duty. Um, what I felt was you had this huge amount of responsibility on your shoulders mm -hmm. when you were in service. And when you get out into the civilian world, uh, that responsibility, it, it goes away and you, but you crave it you you want more and more responsibility and i think a, a lot of folks including myself had a hard time transitioning because you you feel like you're taking a step back and i think that people need to understand that you may have to take that step back to get two steps ahead because you you've learned a lot in the military and a lot can be applied but there's so much in the civilian world whether it be marketing and finances and other things that you need to relearn or you need to learn for the first time so uh, i think a lot of veterans get frustrated they're they were you know uh, ncos or officers and now suddenly they feel like i don't have that responsibility anymore but they need to understand that it's fine it's okay you're you're now learning another career and to be successful you may need to take that step back but again, you'll accelerate faster than maybe your peers would mm -hmm. given your, your military experience. So don't get discouraged is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to have to learn a, a new job, a new career, and that's going to be tough. Absolutely. So businesses like Veterans United uh, Craft Brewery have a chance to provide that support, especially for those who might be struggling in a crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, veterans don't go into a crisis just for any one reason. It's usually much more complicated than that. There's a lot of things to navigate, mm -hmm. including a new job and, and some new skill sets maybe that they're having to acquire. Um, so uh, what would be one thing that you would say to veterans, maybe veteran family members who would be struggling in this kind of crisis, mm -hmm. maybe even wrestling with uh, suicidal thoughts? Yeah, I would say you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So that is the key takeaway. Uh, we've all gone through some element of, of stress. And uh, so, you know, talk to your brothers and sisters out there who've served. Uh, we're here to help, even, even if it's just uh, to lend an ear. But by being part of the Watchstander program, now we, we uh, myself and some of my employees, have now learned what they can do to take the next steps to get that person some help. Absolutely. Yep. And the more businesses that come together and build that network of watchstanders and veteran safe places, the better our veterans will be who might be in crisis. Correct. So thank yep. you so much for uh, attending those trainings and, and really just promoting uh, being a veteran safe place to our veterans and providing that network for them of support. Oh, definitely. And one thing I would like to bring up, so yeah. in working with uh, the Fire Watch and the Watchstander program uh, with Nick, we've tried to raise awareness 
awareness to about the program. And one of the things we did last year was we brewed a beer for them mm -hmm. and we were able to get it out to market to various bars and restaurants on draft only. And what we did was to try to, uh, you know, to recruit for the watch standard program uh, was we had these QR codes on the back. Well, it, it was it was good. It was successful. But this year we amped it up a little bit and we wanted to get into more people's hands because not everyone goes out to bars and restaurants to drink. Mm -hmm. So what we did was this year we put it into uh, 12 ounce cans and every wow. can has that same QR code on it that people are encouraged to uh, to scan it on their phone and then to learn more about the watch standard program or hopefully you know register to go through the training so it's just another way to get the word out to folks who may not hear about it at their work or in their personal circle, but maybe if they're at Publix or Winn-Dixie and they see that on the shelf, they'll like, hey, well, that's kind of interesting beer. And as they start to read it and turn the can, I, I think I'll scan it, tell me more about it. So, uh, and it was so successful. We released this beer into the market. It's already, for the most part, gone through the channels. I believe uh, the only place right now who's getting uh, the last shipment in this total wine here in town, but, uh, but it's one that uh, we plan to continue and, and hopefully raise awareness uh, in, in the months and, and years ahead uh, through what we can do as a brewery. So Excellent. Uh, what a wonderful and creative way to get the message out. Mm -hmm. uh, so fantastic. Putting it in the hands of those who, who might want to know more. Um, thank you again, Ron, for oh, sharing uh, what yeah. you guys are doing at Veterans uh, United. And uh, thank you again for uh, joining us for a five minute salute. Uh, I do want to direct you to the firewatch.org where you or your organization can go through the watch standard training. It's 30 to 45 minutes. It is free and you will be equipped with some of the skill sets to recognize risk factors and warning signs for veterans who might be in crisis. And uh, who knows, maybe as a veteran safe place, we'll be able to have you on this show as well and to provide an interview and celebrate what you are doing in the community. This is Scott Swanstrom with the Firewatch, and we are putting on a very special event to show our appreciation to all of our watch standers, our veterans, and our family members that are part of those communities. And so we would love to have you come out for our bonfire and barbecue at Hannah Park on May the 6th. Uh, feel free to register at info at thefirewatch.org, and we would love to see you there. I'm Nick Howland, Executive Director of the Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. Veterans at risk of homelessness are five times more likely to attempt suicide. This December 31st, the CDC will be lifting its restrictions on residential evictions. Thousands of struggling veterans could find themselves without a home. You can help. If you know a veteran at risk, direct him or her to thefirewatch.org, where we maintain a veteran's resources guide. Everything from emergency financial assistance to transitional housing. Together, we will end veteran suicide. Greetings everyone, my name is Scott Swanstrom. I am your host of Veteran Safe Places. And today we have a very special guest, Nick Padlow from Soft Roast Recovery. And we're gonna get a chance to just delve into his story a little bit more and what he's doing at Soft Roast Recovery and how they came into the family of Veteran Safe Places. Uh, Veteran Safe Places is a movement that has been initiated by the Firewatch, which we are trying to reduce and ultimately to nix every veteran suicide. And we really wanna provide uh, life-giving support to them and just really celebrate uh, their service to our country because even heroes need heroes. Uh, but let me go ahead and turn the conversation over to Nick here. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Uh, tell us a little bit about Soft Roast Recovery. Yeah, so Soft Roast Recovery is a treatment center for addiction and mental health issues um, that was really started out of my own experience in recovery, which I think we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but we exist as a place that's, um, it's called intensive outpatient. So you're spending you know, either half a day or a full day with us over the course of six to 12 weeks in order to really start to address not only 
you know, underlying addictions with drugs and alcohol, but also the reasons that we start to use in the first place um, and kind of building a toolkit mm -hmm. that helps us to, to more effectively manage and, and work our way through life. Excellent. Very good. Uh, so you're you're wrestling a lot with co-occurring disorders, mental health challenges Correct. that a person might be navigating through at that time also. And you have a heart for veterans. And, and I, I understand that's part of why you wanted to become a veteran safe place. Sure. How did the core values of becoming a veteran safe place align with Soft Rose Recovery? Yeah, so I'm an Army vet myself, um, you know, and as I have over the years, I've noticed that not only do a lot of vets struggle with addiction and mental health, but personally, I have lost more friends to suicide than to IEDs. Mm. And, and that's a disaster. Yeah. And so we have to have places that can, can help folks navigate this because frankly, we don't learn how to navigate it in the army. We learn a lot, or in the military in general, we learn a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but we don't learn that. We don't learn how to navigate emotions. Yeah. I, I know active duty learn to take on challenges that, that are beyond the scope of what your normal everyday civilian can tackle. And so when a, a veteran probably wrestles with mental health challenges, not knowing where to go and the pride of, of thinking I should be able to take care of this is, is really daunting, I can imagine. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about your story and you served our country in uniform and you made that transition into civilian life. What were some of the challenges that you faced? Yeah, so uh, I was in from 2003 to 2008, uh, a lot of time in Afghanistan and Iraq. And I, I think there are a few things that, that I faced and that other people face when they get out of the military. And one of them is this kind of, as you mentioned, this loss of core values. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask any military vet what the core values of their service branch are, and they can tell you leadership, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. That's the armies. I'll never forget them. Mm -hmm. And then when you get out into the civilian world, it's almost like all those things are gone. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're wandering around aimlessly without this, this sense of, of mission and purpose for mm -hmm. who we are. And, and, and I think that's the first thing is really having to redefine that mm -hmm. as a civilian. And then I think the second thing that people struggle with when they get out is this kind of um, return from a state of hypervigilance. Mm -hmm. So okay. especially when we're in war, everything's turned up all the time. Mm -hmm. And then when we come back, it's not. And the dopamine and the serotonin and our brains don't know what to do. And so they can react in funny ways. And then I think the third thing is we aren't taught how to navigate this type of issue, mm -hmm. you know, and we're taught that it represents weakness. You know, if you think about being on a run with your with your squad or your platoon, like someone having a twisted ankle and falling out of a run is, is shameful. Mm -hmm. So we run through the pain, mm -hmm. right? But we can't do that when it comes to mental health. It doesn't work. And, you know, I, I when I try to give this analogy to veterans, one of the things I say is like, would you ever run away from an enemy in combat? Mm -hmm. Would you ever run away? And like, the answer is no, mm -hmm. like, of course not. I'd never run away. It's like, well, why are you running away from this one? Yeah. And, and frankly, it's probably the most difficult battle a lot of us will ever face in our life. And the only way out, what we say in treatment, the only way out is through. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to fight it head on and you've got to address it. And, and a lot of times, you know, you need help to do that. And, you know, that's what we exist for is a, is a place where we can help people navigate through some of those difficult challenges. So Nick, what would you say to a veteran who is struggling with a mental health challenge or even a substance use challenge, and, and how would you give them hope? Yeah, it's a good question, um, because that's what we lose when we get there, right? Yeah. We don't have any hope. We don't think there's any way out, um, but there is a way out. Mm -hmm. And so many of us have found that way out, right? And um, it's okay to, to admit that you need help to find that. Mm -hmm. And, and there are organizations that, that specialize and people that, that like specialize in giving you the tools to navigate your way back to who you were and potentially someone like fresh and new that's even better than that. And so, you know, at, at Sophros, we've seen a number of veterans come in and then come out the other side and be a completely different person. And so it's possible. Yeah. It's very possible and it's very attainable. Um, but it takes work. Yeah. It takes absolutely. a lot of work. Um, there's, there's a lot of hope 
in the presence of, of software recovery and the support that you guys provide. And even the fact that you guys have become a veteran uh, safe place for them shows that there is a desire to give back as a community provider uh, and that you do have a passion and a heart for veterans. And most importantly, you show camaraderie and brotherhood that you link arms with veterans who are really struggling and that they don't have to go it alone. And so we really appreciate uh, software recovery being a part of the veteran safe place and uh, really Really appreciate you being here and having a chance to celebrate what you guys are doing in the community and how you're giving back. Uh, our veterans are a special resource to our country, to our communities. Um, they bring so many great traits and, and leadership qualities to our organizations and businesses. So Nick, thank you so much on behalf of the Firewatch. Yeah, thanks Scott, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, if you are interested in your organization or business becoming a veteran safe place, we wanna direct you to thefirewatch.org. You can find out more information about how to become a veteran safe place it's really just a 45 minute training opportunity that you can take online and your employees can become watch standers and really be available for those who have already sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice for their country by giving up their lives. And uh, we can really support them and, and just provide the resources and empowerment to help navigate difficult thoughts and situations, especially when it comes to suicide. So thank you again. At the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, we understand your journey, your commitment to honor. You are not alone. You served our families, now let us serve you. The FDVA will stop at nothing to provide the earned services, benefits, and support you deserve. Reach out to FDVA today. Our mission is you. Welcome home. I'm Nick Howland, Executive Director of the Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. Veterans at risk of homelessness are five times more likely to attempt suicide. This December 31st, the CDC will be lifting its restrictions on residential evictions. Thousands of struggling veterans could find themselves without a home. You can help. If you know a veteran at risk, direct him or her to thefirewatch.org, where we maintain a veteran's resources guide. Everything from emergency financial assistance to transitional housing. Together, we will end veteran suicide. This is Scott Swanstrom with the Firewatch, and we are putting on a very special event to show our appreciation to all of our watch standers, our veterans, and our family members that are part of those communities. And so we would love to have you come out for our bonfire and barbecue at Hannah Park on May the 6th. Uh, feel free to register at info at thefirewatch.org, and we would love to see you there. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of Veterans United. The Firewatch is Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. There's a role for everybody. Join us as a watchstander, visit thefirewatch.org and learn to identify the risk signs of veterans in crisis, how to ask veterans if they need help, and how to get veterans the help they need. Together, we will end veteran suicide.